I hate this sidewalk. I do. And it's not because it actually did anything to me. It didn't like steal my lunch money or something. But when you ride bikes wrong, like me, you learn an important awareness. And that awareness is that all these lovely people driving cars around you are actively trying to end your life. Now obviously, that's not actually true, but I feel it's a much safer mentality to embrace than the contrary. Now the reason I hate this specific lane is because even though it intellectually makes sense that you would move the same direction as the adjacent lane of traffic, it's terrifying! Think about it, you're literally blindly trusting people that you've never met piloting two-ton metal death bubbles and giving them a running start from behind you. Now coming home, that sidewalk is better. I can see the cars coming at me, and despite me not knowing that it existed for the first six months I lived here, it is now the one I use foremost. Just <laughs> now that that's all cleared up, um, there's only one small detail left to address, which is... What does any of this have to do with anything? Now about an hour ago, I was actually riding home, and I nearly used this wretched sidewalk for expediency's sake after it started raining. But then I thought at the bottom of the hill, I was like, well, no, I mean, it's wet outside. That doesn't increase my chances. So I took the 10 seconds that it required to go to the other side and ride up that way. But in the midpoint of the road, I had a flashback to when I was 15, riding my bike home in the rain in Wakulla County, Florida. And I vividly remembered entertaining the thought, what would happen if I got hit by a car? Now, before I go on, let me clarify, this was not a depressed thought. This was a genuinely curious, damn near romanticized, thought experiment that I used to do. I would imagine, what if some freak accident put me in the hospital? Who in school would come out of the woodwork to be nice to me? How much would everyone in the social mecca of my thousand person high school in my 30,000 person town talk about me? If I died, what would the article say I could have done? Because I knew at the time that my usefulness in the greater scheme of the world was nothing as exemplified by my surroundings. My mother's source of income was mobile home rentals where I would tag along every other week either detonating flea bombs or scrambling for pieces of late rent. And my dad was a teacher trying to make some change at the high school that saw two suicides in the three years that I went there out of 1,000 students. From day one to year 15 of my life, I knew that the way to make waves was through tragedy, pity, mediocrity, and gossip. And that my grandest horizons in life were to scrape into a university that donned esteem such as number one party school in the country or number three for sexually transmitted disease. I had no reason to believe that outside of a great deal of physical discomfort, being hit by a car hard enough to hospitalize or just end me would be of any real inconvenience. In fact, at the time, in my mind, it was relieving to think that I wouldn't have to see the disappointment in everyone's face when I failed to do the mediocre things that I was supposed to. But in the coming years, that thought experiment evolved. When I was 16, I landed Allstate Orchestra and met people that were planning to audition for Juilliard. My reaction was, well, they're my peers now, so I'll plan for Juilliard. I got a new bike that year that I rode almost daily, and I still, every once in a while, have thoughts of being hit by a car on the way home. But now, that experiment was exploring thoughts of, well, if I broke my slide arm, how would I play? And how would you tackle recovery if your face got affected? By 17, I was at a new school and staying a lot more to myself this time all the while watching YouTubers from around the world doing their thing and contemplating my own great escape through conservatory. I still rode my bike, I still ran the experiment occasionally, but now the thought was, how could I like move to prevent my right tire from getting hurt? Or, wow, I'd just really rather not get hit by a fucking car, because that wouldn't help me at all in an audition. <laughs> Tonight, when I paused at the bottom of the hill down there, my mind imagined my music preventing me from hearing some idiot wannabe stunt driver in a white Subaru losing control in the rain and hitting me. It imagined how much a six week recovery would suck for the momentum of the startup and all the creative stuff I've been inspired to do lately. It imagined that my time spent in a hospital at less than full strength or just dead would be a stark diminution to what I would have made of it had I gotten home safely. The title of this video is The True Value of Escapism. And that probably didn't prepare you for this weird story, but I feel that sometimes after after we make our strides, we forget the nuances that really show us just how far our mental predispositions evolve. Two years of being able to live vicariously through vloggers with better surroundings prevented me from a lifetime of things like waiting for personal misfortune so that I could reap the pity. So as a champion of classical filmmaking and critic of disposable vlog style content, I absolutely concede that the lens of someone who believes they have something to do is one of the most valuable things the internet has ever facilitated. All to say, if you're someone in the world doing, tell your story and make it a good one so that someone in the world who doesn't know they have an epic to write can get started.
I can't swallow my pride.